Yes, guys, you know what time it is. It's your boy David at the Irish Hotspur, Ireland's number one Spurs fan. And this afternoon, we will be touching on the breaking news that Paratici's 30 month ban has been extended worldwide, which seriously prohibits the job he can do at Tottenham. Um, and it does look like there is good cause for speculation over his future. So we'll be going through the FIFA statement and a lot more topics on this. Of course, this afternoon, we are joined by the one and only co-host, co-host Jack Kanicki. How are you, my man? Uh, it feels like we're about to announce almost like a, a death in the family here, Dave, uh, when it comes to Paratici. I'm surprised, actually. We actually forgot to maybe have some Italian music maybe in the background for you guys to sort of... Uh, maybe honor sort of uh, what could eventually be sort of the the passing of Paratici and his time here at Tottenham Hotspur. Dave, you and I have been the Paratici twins, the Paratici propaganda team. It might be coming to an end here, you know, our work and our services uh, for Paratici. Uh, no longer do we have to send in the invoices to him, you know, and, and defending his name and everything. And uh, I must be honest, it's, a, it's an era that I'm going to miss really, but uh, we also have Ben Kaufman here, so, who we all know just has his stands by his opinions. I kind of feel like, you know, we haven't had Mr. Kaufman on in a while, so I'm forgetting, you know, where his stance is on Paratici. But as we all know, he'll tell us how it is. He'll tell yeah. us what how he feels about it, regardless of our propagandaism when it comes to <laughs> Mr. Pra uh, Paratici. But uh, how are you, Ben? Like, uh, what are your thoughts? Maybe I know it's not a good week for Spurs, and so it definitely does dampen the week sometimes. Um, it is zero days since Tottenham Hotspur did another embarrassing thing. This football club is possibly the most embarrassing organisation on the planet Earth at this moment in time. And it's from top to bottom. Uh, one of the things I would like to, to ask, if we knew this court case was at its end today, why the hell was he doing an update video? That man should be nowhere near the football club until he's proven innocent. And he's not been proven innocent because the court has clearly said this holds water enough to make it a worldwide ban. There is no point of Paratici now. His best work was in Italy. And if he cannot work in Italy, he is pointless. He is utterly pointless. So we're at a time now. We're in the perfect spot. Reset everything. Reset the entirety of the football side of the business. New director of football, new coach, new medical staff, because they've got to go as well. Reset everything. Everyone in the bin. We need to... Yeah, and unfortunately, Paratigy has to be sacked. If he he's does. in the job by the end of the day, it's another embarrassing moment. Because he can't work until the end of this appeal process, uh, end of this appeal process which will be denied. Mm. He's What's gonna he going to be doing? Playing football manager between now and the, the rest of the season? Like he, he can go. He can go to meetings. If you're going to send someone to meetings, send one of us free. Or at least we'll actually mm -hmm. have a have a go at the board. Mm -hmm. it, it's time to go. Unfortunately, whether you think he's done a good job or whether he's done a bad job, yeah. it's time to go. It's it's, it's, it's time to go. It's the end yeah. of it. I I I agree with Ben. Look, ultimately. I think, ultimately, I do think he's done a decent job overall. I think, you know, there has been progression from the Steve Hitchin era. But the fact is, he can't operate in the transfer market, which is what we need him to do this summer. You know, he is also being, um, as we are led to believe, putting together shortlist for this ma for the next manager. But it's pointless him doing that now, purely because he's not going to be there to execute the plan with, with, with that manager. So, you know, and we know that they need to align. So for me, I think it is absolutely pointless keeping him at the football club. Now, the only other way you can keep him at this club is in an advisory role. But what good is that? It's someone taking up an expense that you don't yeah. really need. And at the end of the day, if he can't operate, then then at the end of the day, you've, you've got to sack him. And as sad as it is, that's just that's just the nature of the beast, you know. The ban is there. We he he can't he can't affect anything at this football club. So effectively, it is pointless keeping him here. Um. It's kind Look, of like the tires saying, just going out. It's kind of like, yeah, just a car that can't go forward any further. Yeah. Like, it's just nothing he can do at this stage. Yeah. But yeah, continue, Dave. Sorry. Yeah, what, what what I will say is I would have thought that the club maybe would have done some better uh, due diligence. Now, I know they were probably 
waiting for his court case to kick off yesterday, but obviously it was postponed and put back to March. And today, FIFA came out announcing that it'd be uh, the, the ban is worldwide. And like Ben said, I doubt they would have announced the belt that the ban would have been worldwide if there was no real legs to this story. And look, we know that there is legs to the story through like WhatsApp leaks from Chiellini and stuff like that. We know sort of exactly what's gone on. Um, but look, you know, you think the club would have known or sort of pre pre-planned or prepared for this situation. And I hope they know what direction they're going in next with this, but I highly doubt it, to be honest with you. And now we're left in a situation where we've just sacked the manager. Now our director of football is gone and we're left with Daniel Levy running the shit. And as we all know, he's the one that's had to rely on football uh, people the last few years to sort of get him by. Uh, because in my opinion, I think he's lost the run of this club. I think, with, like I've mentioned plenty of times, with the stadium build, with the training complex building, cost spiralling. And you see Alan Spurs playing the documentary where he talks about how invested he was in the stadium. He's completely lost the football run inside of things. And he's he's basically relied on experienced sort of heads within within the game. And it's backfired on them because none of them really have that affiliation with, with Tottenham Hotspur, you know, to sort of keep, to sort of advise them on the football side of what's best for Tottenham Hotspur. Daniel Levy doesn't surround himself with them sort of people. And now I think it's all come back to bite them in the ass. And now we're in a position where we're just being laughed at all over the world, manager and director of football gone. So it's a scary situation to go into. It's not ideal. You've got a summer transfer window coming up mm -hmm. where we've got a lot of players that are deemed um, deadwood. They have to be sold. We've still got some in the squad that need to go. We've got, we have to replace our, our captain and our long-term number one in Hugo Reese. We need someone to come in and build that defence. So, you know, we've got Kane coming up to the end of his contract. So, again, not sort of an ideal situation. What will Kane be thinking now? You know, uh, um, you know, a, a ship without any sort of steering with no rudders. And it's kind of like, you know, I wouldn't blame him now if he sort of wants out because there's no sort of clear direction. So, it is very worrying times for this football club, I would say. Seriously is. And what's even worrying, more worrying, Dave and Ben here, is the fact that now that Paratici is gone, Conte is gone, who are we left with? It's just us and Daniel Levy left in the room now, I think, yeah. <laughs> which uh, we would like to have certainly our distance between. But everybody in the chat, it's good to see you. We're going to go through you, uh, go through some of the, the topics as well, but do want to say hello to plenty of you. We got Amir mm -hmm. in the house saying, get him out as soon as possible. Bring back Potch. I mean, Amir, it is probably the best way to bring back Pochettino is getting rid of a director of football. He doesn't like the uh, the he doesn't like the directors of football. Pochettino does. So you are absolutely mm -hmm. right there. Wayne Bonner says, "Roll up, roll up, buy your tickets here for the Tottenham Fun Fair, where the fun never ends." Afternoon, I'll see you in the nut house. I've already booked my padded cell. You and me will be talking hill messy in there with the straight jackets. Don't you worry, yeah. uh, Wayne Bonner. Uh, Ellie's in the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is going from bad to worse our beloved club has gone to the, the i think the, the oh, point of all lows gone to par, gone to par. Say, say say that again sorry gone to par. it's a it's a phrase gone to par. It's, it's, it's a phrase Down the, same. Toilet. the yank learned another thing everybody the yank has learned another another phrase uh from conte's honest uh rant to paratici's worldwide ban it's uh embarrassing uh, ellie it is becoming embarrassing like uh ben had said earlier zero days since our last accident vince vegas in the house good to see you he says my wife says i support the, <laughs> the chicken team need to tell her to say the mighty cockerels not uh not very mighty at this moment at stage but we'll stay strong vince and appreciate your support as always billy's in here saying get him out stealing a living we have also the likes of Lee Richards. The naming rights for the stadium should go to Billy Mart Circus because that's when we become a circus and the joke is on yeah. us Spurs fans. Also, Lee, saw that you grabbed the membership the other day, man, so really do appreciate Thank the support you. as well. Foggy Foam is in the house. Good afternoon, guys. Problems are piling up. I do feel even Levy, he's clueless how he's even going to fix this mess, I think. He's probably the worst person to have at this moment in time because it's footballing decisions that need yeah. to be made, Foggy Foam, to get us out of this. And he's not the right guy ever to be making these sort of footballing decisions to get us out of it. Business decisions, maybe a different story, but that's not what we need right now. Tad Bakes says Spurs need root cause analysis. Common denominator is Levy. I think a lot of us can agree with that. Big yourself up, Tad. Tony Austin's in the house saying it's always Spurs. Exactly right. Hotspur J is in here. Taku BB is in here. Got Jacob in the house in here. Good to see you, Jacob. Maybe and needed some hubs saying big ups, y'all. How is the Wi-Fi so good in prison? Video was decent quality yesterday. Dave, are we going to maybe keep a... I don't know. It feels like it's going to be hard to sort of get the, the Harris Army behind this, but maybe we can try to do a bit of a fundraiser for Paratrici's phone bill in prison. 
No, look, if he's not at Tottenham, then there's no need to do the fundraiser whatsoever. Yeah. Um, but look, one thing I will say is it, it's it seems strange that the club made him do that video yesterday, you know, sort of in-house video and with what was said in it. And then, you know, today's band sort of comes out, you know, you, you sort of question or you wonder, were they aware that this sort of news was coming today? Because I'd like to think they were sort of had some sort of inkling. And second of all, if if they were, then then why were they, why did they allow that statement to be put out yesterday? Is it Daniel Levy just making Paratici take more of the shit before he leaves to save him from having to do the video? Because again, it stinks of bad, bad PR, you know. And at the minute, this, this 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 club needs needs a leader. It needs a leader. It needs someone to come out and share what the vision is, what the plans are going forward, how we're going to use uh, consecutive top four finishes to be able to push on and start competing, you know. Um, so there, there, there's a lot there. There's um, there's a lot, a, a lot to this, you know, a lot, a lot to this. Um, I, I just think it's bad PR and it's it's significant to, you know, what we're used to seeing. No. No sort of direction, no communication with the fans whatsoever. And it's like I said this a while ago to you, Jack. You know, you've got Joe Lewis who pays Daniel Levy to take the shit so it doesn't go to Joe Lewis. And then you've got Daniel Levy who pays Paratici to take the shit so it doesn't go to him. And then you've also got the manager then that's brought in by the director of football to take his shit so it doesn't go to him. And then you've got the likes of Dyer and Davies kept around to take the manager's shit so it doesn't go to them. And it's just everyone is paying someone to be the excuse, to be the escape goal. And nobody Mm. is actually paying anyone to step up and actually really sort this shit out. What do you think, Ben and uh, Dave, just quickly? Was Parachichi's video yesterday, was that just Danny Levy, like, kind of just sending him to, I don't know, execution or something like that? Like, was it just, like, his way of just embarrassing him or something like that? What do you think? It's, it's the story of all our directors of football. Every one of the directors of football we've had have all been well-respected in their field before they joined Tottenham. It's the same with Conte, it's the same with Mourinho. They're the best at what they do until they joined Tottenham. Paul Mitchell said this when he was the di- uh, the head scout or director of football. Mm-hmm. Daniel Levy made my dream job a nightmare. It's happened again. Franco Baldini, someone I know uh, from many meetings that I've had with him, is a genius when it comes to football. The moment he comes to Tottenham, he can't like, do it anymore. Steve mm-hmm. Hitchens so- got so many good players over the line. The likes of Skriniar. The likes of Jack Grealish, the likes of uh, Paolo Di Bala, um, all these top quality players. He gets them to the club and then the chairman doesn't sign the check. Our directors of football are full guys. They are used so the flack is on them and not on the club. It and even every time. The last one we had that was any good was Frank Arneson. And he saw mm. that this was about to happen. So he jumped ship immediately. He mm. knew he was going to be used as a scapegoat. So he went to Chelsea. And look what happened when he went to Chelsea. And now the most dominant club in the last 20 years in terms of winning trophies. Oh, what, do you, what do you just follow up on? Sorry. Do you, what do you think? Like, is he a, was were were the signs there this summer? Were the signs there maybe earlier than that? That sort of like Parachichi was just sort of like an interpreter for Levy. Like I've sort of said as kind of the middleman between him and the manager where it's not like Paratigi is speaking for the manager. He's more probably trying to be like some sort of mouthpiece for Levy that at least doesn't piss off the manager because it's probably more likely or not that Paratigi has the better sort of people skills and negotiating skills with the manager to be able to sort of keep them on board for as long as possible. But I don't know, like where did it maybe become obvious that it wasn't much different than maybe Steve Hitchin or something like that when it comes to his influence. I'm going to answer your question with another question. (laughs) How many football clubs have a director of football, but the chairman is still doing the majority of the deals? Richarlison, Basuma, Spence. Mm. Uh, We can name loads of them. This is not a director of football that's in charge of footballing matters if we're getting in Spence, who was clearly... Because who we know, his agent knows Daniel Levy very well. Um, Richarlison, who is... Uh, was at Everton at that point. Everton and Tottenham have a good relationship through Daniel Levy, and he did, we know that he did that. When is a director of football going to actually be able to bring in the players they want? It's too much micromanaging and meddling from the chairman. 
Mm. It's too much. We we need to be on the same page. We need to have a chain of command. And that screams from the team as well. It screams. Mm. I'm the director of football. I sign the players. You give me the money. I sign the players. And if I fail, I get sacked. There's Correct. no accountability. Because if Levy's doing deals like a Richarlison, a Basuma, who I thought was a really good signing at the time, but it's clearly, it's that, it's it's club signings. The Conte said club signings. The club want to sign players young with low wages. We've always done that before Paratigi was there. So it mm. all screams at the, the chairman. He did it under Pochettino, which is fine. He did it. Uh, yeah. But if they want to do that, tell us. It's lack of transparency. They don't tell us anything. They, it, like, it's the Malcolm in the Middle joke. I've been using that recently. I expect nothing and you still disappoint me. We need to allow people to do their jobs. We cannot allow any more directors of football um, to have their arms tied behind their back the moment they get into the football club. We need to have some resemblance. If Levy wants to do the business stuff, brilliant he's fantastic at that he's the best on the planet at doing what he does allow directors of football to do what they're good at allow them to breathe. Them, and he might as well be the manager he might as well tell her, i'm the director of football and i'm the coach but he'd have to sack himself in 18 months so that's a real problem more, I'm, more, I'm with you yeah go ahead dave sorry no sorry uh i was just going to say look more importantly what we need is alignment you look I've, I've already accepted that sort of the chairman you know he does the he does the bidding for the owners and then you've got the director of football who's supposed to sort of do the bidding yeah. for the manager and he's the sort of go between where he sort of combines both sort of visions but ideally what you want is a chairman who sort of his visions align with the director of football and that director of football's vision aligns also with the manager and bringing in a manager that has that that, that plays the same sort of similar or has the same yeah. philosophy of football as the director of football and this is where and the academy as well. most importantly academy because we know uh from many people who are part of the coaching uh, not part of the coaches but know the coaching setup well mm. the first team does not work with the academy the, and that does not happen your there's academy a number of and your first team should be like that. They should be like, the first team should be looking at players in the academy and they should be saying to the academy, that boy is quality. He's getting ready for, put him ready for the first team. But it seems like they're like that. There's a wall. There's like a massive brick wall between the two of them. We need to ruin the Ajax, the Manchester City mm -hmm. setup, the Barcelona. We should be looking at players in the academy, go straight into the first team. And there's, la there's a yeah. lack. The thing is, what we need is no, no, no. You're 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 100 spot on. And look, man, that'll come once we sort out the first team issues. Once you've got a solid, you know, product on the pitch, a solid 15, 16 players that you can rely on, you know, and you clear out the rest of the deadwood and the crap. That then opens up the doors for youngsters to to come into the first team to sort of get them early rounds of the cups. Like me and Jack were talking about it yesterday. We're persisting with international footballers who we constantly get the same things, especially away from home, like the patterns that we've highlighted, you know. Um, and for that to change, um, you know, you need you need to clog out the players up on loan, the driftwood from the squad as well, get them out. And that frees up then the connection between the youth academy and the first team football because they can come and train. They have a chance to impress. They're not fighting with 15 other players that are cast aside. And unfortunately, what we've had is managers trying to play them so that they can sort of get them going. They've ultimately let them down. And then these guys keep outlasting managers. And that has to stop. What we need is a director of football who's going to come in. We need him to audit that squad. We need him to go through every mm -hmm. player individually, you know, pros and cons, sort it out, get them out. Also, get a manager in that sort of has the same belief and the philosophy as football as you and as the club. If 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 the club has been built on attack and philosophy, we've already gone down a route of win at all costs. That hasn't worked because we're not providing the injection or the funds that it needs. So then you have to go down a route where the director of football has to believe in an attack and philosophy of play. He then has to get in a manager that also balances with that out. And when you have alignment there, I think, you know, you start to build up trust. Everyone's on the same page. And I think you'll probably release a bit more funds as well, you know, if they have that belief and that trust and everyone is of the same alignment. And that's what we need at this football club. And the next appointment in director of football and management have to be absolutely spot on. 
uh, for a number of reasons. I know I'm waffling and we've got some super chats and that to get to. We'll get to just hit, let me let, let me uh, land as the people saying, oh, isn't it? Let me land. Um, <laughs> so what I'm and what I mean, what I mean by um what I was going to say is uh, I can't remember what I was going to say now. Oh yeah, I feel like yeah, where they want to be aligned, Dave. Right, you know, the director of football and the manager need to be aligned because if we've seen it before, and Spurs is such a good case study, an example of it where you have an attacking manager in one uh, moment, and then the next manager is a defensive, when it all costs, a yeah. uh, completely different type of ethos and philosophy. And then you're finding yourself buying completely different players. And mm -hmm. you look at clubs maybe in comparison, like a Brighton or whatnot, who maybe hire different managers, but the managers all seem to be somewhat similar to each other. I but also all the players seem to be able to be able to integrate into whatever system it may be and that's where you want is that sort of alignment and that sort of ethos where everything is sort of on the same page and on the on the same sort of book if, if you ask me and that's where also i feel like ben was obviously right that you don't want the chairman making any of the uh the transfers but the byproduct or maybe the obvious reason making the transfers is that you don't see any consistency or any sort of transparency in how the direction of where we're going is it's just not obvious and i think that's reflective with the fact that we've had different directors of football over this period of time who i you know i think with steve hitchin and versus prachity versus paul mitchell is another thing but the point being is like uh ben had said earlier paul mitchell felt like his life was made to be a living yeah. hell and prachity has only been here thus this long we need there to be actually some sort of yeah. direction and that needs to also be then the keys to the palace, so to so to speak, need to be also given to reason, that director of football so that we can have some real direction. The reason why I was saying it's it's very important for this to happen is, is because you've got the likes of Brighton, their model that is built from the owner all the way down, that's starting to show some, some success. You know, it wouldn't surprise me with the way they're going if they're shouting at top four soon. You've got um, Fulham under Marco Silva, and he tends they, they tend to always give managers good backing. Wouldn't surprise me if they make a case for it soon. You've got Newcastle, who are just sitting there waiting to pounce. You've got Liverpool, who will be back there next year. Chelsea will be back there next year. United will be strong next year. I'd say Arsenal will kick on again next year. So that top four spot all of a sudden becomes from... Arsenal and Tottenham fighting for it every year to four, five, six teams in the fight. And if we don't get this right, we are we are in massive danger of falling behind that. And it could take years and years to get back there. Even if you make progress in the transfer market and that, every other club seems to be doing it better than us. So that gap will only increase. It's going to take us so long to get there. But then you also got the added issue of you've got the two gener gen generational talents in Sun and Kane where we have sort of wasted three yeah. of their prime years in their career. Now, we don't know what Kane's future holds outside of this, but like I keep highlighting, it's important. The club have said they're not going to sell him, so it's important. You've got one year to stabilise this team, to stop them shipping goals at the back, to identify how you're going to get around with replacing Kane. And it's not just Kane. It's going to be a system team where you probably need a cam, someone who can provide with a striker up ahead of them. So you've got to sort of bring in them players. So this one, for me, is absolutely critical with all them teams sort of claiming for top four and climbing up there now. we already seen the results of having a bad director of football under Steve Hitchin. It took us from Champions League and regressed us to Europa Conference League. Paratici's recruitment and what he's done at the club got us back to Champions League. But we already see if you get it wrong with the director of football or the um, manager, it can very easily fall backwards and this time it might not be repairable. Mm -hmm. So it's absolutely crucial we get this right going forward. After that, if we do get it right, you will start seeing new players come true. You will start seeing, you know, um, you'll start, we won't have to buy as many players every single summer to fix this mess. You can start identifying, sort of going after the best in that position and try and get them in for certain positions. It'll make things so much easier. But the, we are in an absolute critical moment at this football yeah. club and I cannot stress that enough. Yeah. There is a yeah, yeah, go ahead, Ben, and then we got to welcome some people in. There is some, there's a brilliant solution that Coover talks about a lot. Why don't we, instead of hiring one director of football, why don't we form a committee of Spurs past and present, get Glenn Hoddle, players like Mickey Hazard, uh, David Ginola, Van der Vaart, all these people would love to work for Tottenham. Tim mm -hmm. Sherwood was brilliant as the academy director, and it has collapsed since he left. 
Get all these former Spurs boys that loved being part of Tottenham, get them as part of a committee within the football club to decide the, fo- the, decide the footballing matters. That would be mm. brilliant. Instead of having one full guy, you say you have all these people that know Tottenham better than anyone else deciding the future of the football club. The Ajax set up. You have yeah. Sherwood doing this. I know this Bayern actually have that set up because they think all of the, the from the CEO to the yes. director of football to have pretty that. much everything are that. former Ali players. Ali Khan is CEO. Ali Khan is CEO and then Sally yeah. Hamzic is a have former player is director of football. It would be, it would be brilliant because then you would have all these different players from all these different eras mm. but no football throughout the years and they would be able to say, this is a Tottenham player. Um, Alex, uh, Mr. Box Office said it. Um, I think what is a top? We need to start saying instead of players, that are, we need a Tottenham. Pl- we need Tottenham players that fit the, the realm of the club, and that is what we need. Loads of people uh, that yeah. understand Tottenham better than Levy. Levy is not a football guy. Give the cash and the funds available for people that do know the club to sort the footballing matters, and it would be brilliant. Do, um, do you know what? Just uh, just. just like- it doesn't even need to be players, you know. It could be likes right. of a Martin Yole. It could be yeah. likes of a Harry Redknapp. You know, people like them. Yeah, I would have them cool. on the board. That two, two of the people. They would. They know football. They know all the agents. They know everyone. They know what the top them want. Get those boys in. They know better than Levy. It'd be mm. brilliant. You're right. Joff Totten in the house, uh, all the way in Perth, yeah. will be welcoming the mighty Spurs. Yes, he will be. Pick yourself up, Joff. Grabbing the Flat Cat membership. Thank you for supporting the channel, Big my friend. Joff. Legend, he is definitely always in here as well. Adrian Chia says, Big up, lads. Thoughts on Sun's interview about uh Conte, Adrian. What I would say to you is, Sonny has earned a lot of respect points for me this season just when it comes to his mentality. He has shown more accountability than probably majority of the squad, really. Because as we know, that is a, an issue at Spurs where a lot of players don't show any sort of accountability for their own errors, for their own mistakes, for their own sort of ways of bottling, you know, big games and big performances that we need from them and whatnot. And Sonny has come out when he's been asked about his own struggles this season. He kind of put his hands up on a lot of things and said, do you know what? I could be doing better and just basically showed some accountability when he really didn't need to as much as maybe someone, for example, like Hugo Lloris, who probably didn't show any sort of accountability for the mistakes he's made this season. And also now for Sonny to be one of the only guys to come out and kind of, uh, sort of, you know, wish Conte well and, uh, and and sort of, you know, say that it wasn't as bad as maybe he, others maybe made it out to be, is also quite impressive as well because he had his own struggles this season, Sonny. Yeah. So it shows that he's being the bigger man, if I were to put it shortly, he's being the bigger man. Yeah. I wouldn't say we've heard the end of this either, by the way, because, look, first of all, respect Sonny. You know, he took responsibility for his own form, like Jack said, and he's sort of one of the only players that have actually come out publicly and said anything really on Antonio Conte. But what I would say to people is, and I think I was right when I um, spoke to, I think it was pre-West Ham game or after West Ham game, when Ben Davies said we had to sit in the dressing room and talk about home troops. I knew there was a split in the camp when, when, that, when, when that was said, and I said it at the time. And if you look at Hoiberg, Hoiberg came out and done an interview on international duty, and he said, look, I wasn't happy with the way Conte approached it. But what he needs to do is expand further. Sort of what players are you calling out? Who are you getting at here? You know, uh, Ben Tecor, I know, privately agrees with, with everything that Antonio Conte said. Yeah. You know, I'd say what has happened is for the for the optics of the squad, I'd say a lot of them have got together and said, look, you know, we can't have them speaking about us like that as a collective. Mm-hmm. And those who maybe agree with them, are kind of like, well, you're not hanging me out to drive with some of these losers, so I'm not coming out publicly to say that. And the losers are definitely not going to come out and publicly say that unless they're throwing him under yeah. the bus. So there, I would say there's still a massive split in that camp. And from Hoiberg's words, it looks like, you know, there is a massive split. Some know exactly who Conte is on about. And maybe where Conte should have went a bit further is actually called out the real culprits of the squad. But from what I gather is... I've sort of been along the lines of the right where it's the Driftwood of the Pochettino squad, sort of backup guys who we still have because the more they go, the more I'm seeing more improvements. So for me, I think that's probably who he's alluding to because it makes sense because they're the only people that have spanned Pochettino, Jose, Nuno, Conte, getting managers sacked. 
and they're the ones that have a large grip in around the culture of the changing room. They'll be speaking to all the staff. They can easily go, geez, gee, what can they done to me today? And then Doris goes to Tom, the janitor, and he goes, and then it's passed on. All of a sudden, it all goes back to Daniel Levy. <clears throat> and it creates this narrative. So, look, I, I respect some for what you said, but I would say there's going to be more fallout in that dress room. And I don't think it's going to be United after Conte's gone. And I think you'll see more of it on the football pitch until the end of the season. I think there's big big, big, bigger problems on the horizon. Big up, Adrian. Flabby G, grabbing that Flat Cap membership, my friend. Thank you for supporting the channel, brother. Hopefully you've been enjoying the content so far and really do appreciate you. Love the love the icon as well. I mean, hopefully you can guide us straight, Mr. Sparrow. Uh, but big yourself up. Dermatron, hopefully, you know, you're or at least maybe able to take mind off things this week. And maybe the stream can help you, you know, at least take mind off things. But big yourself up, Dermatron. He says, big up, guys. What the hell happened? I go away for a week and all hell breaks loose. We are in a mess and a major mess. Bill Nick would be looking down and say, where are my spurs? Dave, maybe Dermot was the one holding it all together until now the factory has, <laughs> you know, gone into meltdown. Go uh, on, Ben, what were you going to say quickly? Yeah, I'll go said in the 80s, that's why Keith Birkinshaw said there used to be a football club there once. It was gone in the 80s. The, the Spurs has not existed as a philosophy for decades, uh, not for 40 years. Mm. Um, well, it looks like we're never going to get it back at this rate, but mm. what a shame. Look, Dermot, first of all, I hope you and the missus are okay, my man. I, well, obviously, you're not going to be okay, but hopefully you will be okay in time to come, my man. You know, uh, time is always a good healer, as they say. So hopefully you and Darv are, are good, my man. Look, when it comes to this football club, like I've already sort of re-said, it's just kind of like there's, mad, there's, there's a lot more to follow. You know, you've got a chairman who's been relying on sort of very experienced people within the game, the likes of a Jose, Steve Hitchin, who, look, I think he was shit, but he's experienced in football. Paratici Conte, to sort of pull us out of this mess. It hasn't happened. And now we're just left solely with a German, with no one in there with any sort of football knowledge in and around them. So it's scary times. You've got a transfer window coming up where, you know, you, you've got to go in and get, you've got to be proactive about going and getting your goalkeeper, good centre-backs in here. Them deals and negotiations always take time. We've got no director of football. We're in the middle of a top four race with no manager. It's, and, you know, we're, 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 it's getting to the point where it feels like there's never a day without anything dramatic happening at Tottenham Hotspur. And it can't keep continuing like this. It just can't. And everyone's getting fed up with it. The fans are becoming disillusioned. The players are becoming disillusioned. I'd, I'd, I'd argue we're actually creating a culture where it's sort of like anyone with a winning bone in their body is just walking away from Tottenham Hotspur. You know, it looks like Kane could do it. Whether people like Conte or not, the reality is he has 14 trophies on his CV. He's gone. Jose, another 25 trophies on his CV. He's gone. You know, it's like anyone with any sort of winning bone seems to be out of this club and it's going in that sort of direction. It's not good yeah. enough. You even look at the best of Potcher squad. Yes, yeah, some of them are getting old, but some of them want it out. And the guys that we've replaced them with are nowhere near that level. And anyone that's a winner is walking away from this club. So Daniel Levy's got one hell of a job on his hands because he's got so many fans fans that are pissed off and fed up with what's going on. They're about to hike, um, hike the season ticket prices, um, which is going to piss off fans even more. So if he doesn't get this next one right, you see it all over the media, talk sports, sky sports, the whole lot. You know, everyone questioning what's going on at Tottenham Hotspur. If he does not get this one right, it's, I think it's going to end end in one way for him. But then you've got you you've got a hard job because he owns 29.4% of Enoch. And he set up Enoch with Joe Lewis. And his family also on that percentage with him. So his family's not going to sack him. Joe Lewis ain't going to sack him. So it's kind of like, who's going to hold him accountable? Who's going to audit his job? So And it's sort of a model that's not really precedented in the yeah. Premier League. You know, that's why a lot of other clubs can affect the change with what they do in terms of protests and stuff like that because the the, 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 the chairman is not usually a part of the ownership or didn't help set up the group that owned yeah. Tottenham Hotspur whereas we have that at Tottenham so it's a bit of a different model to every Premier League club which makes it harder to affect the change that we need at this football club it's also so all I can say to Daniel Levy is if he doesn't get the next one right fans, media, everybody's going to be on his case but it should have been on his case 20 years to. ago uh, too many people keep on making mistakes uh, and excuses for this ownership. Uh, they've done some brilliant things with the training ground, the infrastructure. 
But when it comes to the football inside of the business, we are the only football club where football is the fifth priority at the football club. Everything else is a priority over football. And you can see that on the pitch. You can see that it's not a priority. And that's why we've only, I think there's, we've only got something like six scouts in the world. Something crazy. Imagine that, but they've got clubs like Ajax who are nowhere near the, yeah. the money makers that we are, have hundreds of scouts all over the world. Hundreds. And we've got like six. It's madness, yeah. the amount yeah. of money. It's crazy. But we, yeah. we, we're we brilliant at doing everything other than football. What's it, actually it, funny about that, Ben, though, is what's sad to say is I think Paratigy is the one who brought in more scouts than what we even previously yeah. had before, which is actually it's a scary madness. thing to even think about. Uh, uh, Mr. One and Only, Graham, is in the house. Um, Pick yourself up, my friend. Mr. Steve D is also, yeah, I saw uh, Sue Smith as well. Pick yourself up, Sue Smith. Steve, Z, Steve D is in here. Afternoon, gents. This was inevitable. Should have been sacked straight away. Will Kulu and Bentecor signings be subject to investigation, do you think? Uh, I believe that's been in some manner or fashion by Ali Gold sort of kind of just, yeah, I don't know. It was just sort of kind of put water to the to the flames of that or just sort of kind of put water to the rumors of that. Whatever you, would, you, you would have heard rumblings in it with that Parisma investigation, which yeah. is that investigation going on at Juve. I'm sure they would have looked into, you know, the, the, the transfers from Juve to Tottenham and there's nothing that's been come of it. There's been no rumblings about it. So I would say they're pretty much safe. Big yourself up, Steve D, and also big yourself up, Mr. Spurs72, you absolute legend. Lee Richard says, embarrassing as last couple of weeks been, this is an opportunity for a big reset at the club. Get a manager and director of football in that are aligned with each other, exactly what we were just speaking about. And I think Lee Richards basically just put it on a little plaque for us here. Thank you very much, Lee. Honestly, we should be waking up and thinking about this for the time being until it gets done. But I don't know, like lads, do is it kind of manager and director of football need to be kind of hired in kind of coordination and sort of kind of with the same sort of thinking that they have already either worked with each other or we know they can work with each other. They can't be hired kind of separately, like two different sort of uh, entities. They need to be hired sort of like we were saying. They need to be brought together and we need to know that they can work together. Uh, then you can take it, yeah, yeah, take it, Ben. It's just building a philosophy. We need to draw a line in the sand and say, this is what Tottenham is going to be for the next 10 years. We need to hire a coach for minimum five years. And even if it means we don't get the Champions League, even if it means we're not in Europe, even if it means we finish 14th, we need to stick by a manager. Because sacking a manager every 18 months is not going to fix anything. Because they're going to buy their players in and then you're going to end up like us. Already, we've got five different philosophies, whether it's Pochettino, Nuno, Mourinho, Conte, um, Mason. We've got, mm. uh, we got too many philosophies. Under, we need to have what Arsenal have. One manager, one team. All the players, bar two, are his players, which means they're all going to listen to him. But you're going to have like, oh, Poch did it this way. Oh, Nuno did it this way. Conte did it. No, it, we need to have one team and we need to have a chain of command the team goes to the manager the manager goes to the director of football director of football goes to the owner whereas we've got the danny rose situation when he was having his fight with Mourinho. i'm gonna go mm. straight to Lee. i'm gonna go straight to daniel we cannot have that anymore we've got to have if you've got a problem you go with your lion manager we've we've got to have that now but we yeah. in returns we've got to have the manager Director of football. If we get a Nagelsmann, I think Nagelsmann is a good choice. I know you think he's a, a soy latte yeah. drinking manager. Um, <laughs> no, I'm fine, with <laughs> I'm fine with them. I think he's a brilliant manager, and he's done brilliant at um, he's done brilliant at clubs like Leipzig, who run under a similar philosophy. Get him in, give him a four year contract with an option for two. Build the team in your yeah. image. If we don't finish in the Champions League. Okay, but as soon we've got this problem, as soon don't as pull the plug league, like we always have right away and things like as that. As soon as we man. cannot get Champions League football anymore, sacked. No, mm. we're going to build around you. We're going to let you, we're going to let you have your philosophy. Build the team in your image. I agree. Build I agree. the team, and when you've got your team, then your timer starts. I think That's a good example of what Lee wants here, Ben and yeah. Dave, is like. Yeah. 
if you bring in Pochettino, you bring in Paul Mitchell because you know those two work together. You yeah. know then that that's an example of being aligned. You bring in Nagelsmann, perhaps you bring in like a Rangnick. You do bring in maybe a, some sort yeah. of Red Bull guy yeah. that does is familiar with Nagelsmann, comes from that similar school of thought and how maybe the different sort of players they've identified, etc. And those would be two good examples, I think. Well, Martin Yell. Martin Yell knows Nagels Nagelsmann well. That's which is mm. why I was talking him up so much. Bring in a Martin Yell. He knows what type of football he plays. Correct. Yeah, it just good. feels like, but you do, you do both at the same time. You do one yeah. while thinking of the other, yeah. I think is what needs to happen. I completely agree with you, Lee. Uh, John yeah. Stokes is in the house. Big yourself up, John. Yeah, Dave, sorry. Up, John. Big up, John. I just wanted to uh, maybe, maybe just expand a little on what you two guys were, were, were talking about there on, on, on Lee's super chat. One thing I want to say is you have to have a chairman that's going to have, for all of this to work, because, like, look, this is something I've been calling a long time, and Ben's absolutely correct on it. You know, you've got to, especially after something like Pochettino, you're always going to go through one or two one or two managers. But this is going on too long now. And what we need is an owner that also yeah. understands the situation we are in, where he is going to give that director of football that time and that manager that time. He also has to have the understanding when bringing in these guys that, look, for the next one or two seasons, it might be a little bit rocky. You might get top four. You might just miss out. But he has to accept that and realise, I'm going to back it and continue with it and continue to back it. That's been the problem at this football club. Since Pochettino, we've gone with three different managers, three sort of different formations. And, and so you would say the same ideology about defence and stuff like that. But the reality is, we didn't even bring in defenders for these guys to sort of implement their style and their philosophy. And then we're sacking them off the back of it. And what we do need is we need stability. We need continuation. And there's always these arguments about as a manager being back. It's not about what you do under the first few windows in a short tenure of 18 months. It's how you continue to back the guy. That's what should all we should always be talking about. Continue to back the guy. Instead of going, no, they have to get better out of Dyer. Demand the club gets someone in that's better than Dyer so that we can actually see a cohesive defence, for example. But then what you got to do is also once you once the owner or, or the chairman has that understanding, you make sure the director of the football and the football uh, and, and the manager they don't even have to have worked together before. They just have to have the same ideology when it comes to playing style, when it comes to recruitment and stuff Absolutely. like that. And then after that, you also need to get ahead of something to get it together. Someone that's going to, you know, because Ben's right, you've got six scouts when, when you go and do the research, you know, just from here alone, when I was in the academy set up over here, you had Liverpool scouts, United scouts, Everton scouts, all over this country, just going to Sunday league games, going to uh, tournaments involving each county, where each county plays each other. And they're always over talking. There's never any Tottenham scouts over here doing that, you know, never. So that needs to be sorted out. And also you need you, you, you need whatever manager comes in or whatever the style and philosophy is of the club. You need to replicate that right down to the youth academy so that anyone that's stepping up from the under 21s into the senior team, they already have a grasp of the tactics. I believe, in my personal opinion, they should be playing the exact same way under the same tactics. Mm -hmm. So if there yeah. ever comes a time when injuries or suspensions, you need to rely upon them. They're well versed in what you're doing, and then it's just a matter of, you know, can they hold their bottle? Can they go out there and perform, or will they crumble under the pressure? But I will say, I think we can put all of that in place while maintaining in and around the fourth position. I don't think it needs a full sort of press the TNT sort of full implosion. I don't think it needs that. I think you've got the. I think Paratici has left the shell and the basis of something to build on in terms of some good young players there. Um, so, so, some some good players that he's brought in, matched with Kane and Son, with a few additions. I think you can maintain that. You're still going to get some ups and downs and put the rest in place and then really kick on from next season onwards. Yeah. And uh, as big yourself up, John Stokes, and uh, Truth Sets Free is gifted a membership to Derek Smith. Derek Smith, come on and have your yeah. son, my friend. And uh, Rob Ragnarsson has also been gifted a membership by Truth Sets Free. Come on and have your say. Mr. Rob, thank you very much, Truth. And then he also says, blessings to you all. Wish everyone the best of health. Thank, thank you very much, Truth. And uh, I know for a fact that everybody is uh, certainly, at least mentally, struggling with Tottenham Hotspur. So yeah. definitely do appreciate it, my friend. And hopefully mm -hmm. you're keeping well. Hopefully you're maybe relaxing yourself, you know, somewhere out in the big old USA. Yeah. Pick yourself.
truth. And then also out swinging uh, golf clubs somewhere, causing havoc. <laughs> swinging golf clubs, telling about telling people about your struggles with Spurs, and then teaching people the good game. Good <laughs> pick yourself up. Adrian Chia says Levy wants uh, two billion. Seems as cool as a hit boss with players. Yeah, Levy wants two B. Yeah. I think he wants more Absolutely. than two billion to be fair, Absolutely. right? Oh, he wants to team cool with the players. Oh, he wants, he wants, he wants to team, team cool, yeah. With hence, why he eats with, hence why he eats with them. At what billion dollar organization do you see your boss eating with the employees? You don't see it. You don't see it ever. He wants to he, he, and it's micromanaging. It's micromanaging. He's there. He's, he's overlooking them. He's it's like the hour I have sour. Doesn't he have a an office that oversees the training ground, I believe, or something well. like that? He's I think that's where they yeah. it's micromanaging every little detail. You saw that from the stadium and why it was delayed like two months because he didn't like the colours of the fluorescent lights. So he changed every <laughs> single fluorescent light in the bloody stadium. It's 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 too much. You cannot micromanage everything. He needs to. I'm the boss. I'm going to eat with the executives. Players eat with the players. Coaches eat with the play the coaches. Medical staff eat with the medical staff. You've got mm. to have, let everyone have their own space. We can't. We're not a startup in Shoreditch. We're a billion dollar football club, and we need to start acting like it. And it's it's madness. You should never have your boss sitting and, look, and looking i've never had that even working at coffee shops the, the boss eats in a different room we you never sit together with your boss it's, it's you know, madness do you know what though ben look even if he wants to sit with them fair enough that's your prerogative but always have the, the never lose sight in a vision yeah the problem is and you alluded to it you're right you can't have danny rose going and having a chat with Jose Mourinho, not liking what he has to say and then going running tat and tail into daniel just going you right next have, door to the other <laughs> yeah you can't have ben davies you know going well i don't like nuno telling me i'm shit and i'm not really a part of his plans i'm in the b team i'm gonna go and run to daniel you know you can't the players have done it under Conte as well yes Conte got himself sat but the reality is there was already reports in the paper that the players have done that weeks previous yeah. and it's Kind of like you can't have this culture because what you're really doing is you're bringing in a manager and you're not you he has the the least power or the least say out of anyone and realistically he should have the most power outside of the director of football and the chairman and he doesn't because he comes in he's got a captain that's been captain since uh, 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 uh 2014 2015 he's been at the club 10 years so he has a massive say in the dressing room and i've no doubt he has friends with with daniel levy we know this friendly culture is this steve hitchin famously said he was close to the players and that's why he didn't yeah. like letting them go and stuff like that you know, and then when you've got players running, tackling, telling to manager Ben Davies, who's never really, I know some people like him, and I think that, that people say he's okay for backup. Fair enough. But no. the reality is, you know, he's been here eight, nine years, and he doesn't deserve to be on the service that he's given. But yet he has the chairman's ear over a manager. So yeah. what manager, what chance does a manager have if he goes and says, look, these guys have got to go. These mistakes continue to happen. They have to go. And then what Daniel does is go, okay, well, I'll call them up. I'll get their version. And because I know them long and I'm friends with them, I'm going to back them. And this can't continue to happen. If we yeah. want a manager to have any power or any say in here, these guys have to go because they have too much sway, too much, um, you know, um, too too much power going on. These are guys that don't sit there. They don't like being put under pressure. They don't like the intensity that comes with a, a born winner, someone that just wants to win at all costs. They don't care about the friendly atmosphere. Um, and they don't have that. You know, it's like, oh, well, we don't want to do all this repetitive training, but what we do want to do is we want to go and play cricket. And it's kind of like, it's just, it's mind blowing. You can't have this sort of yeah. power. You've yeah. got to get the power back to the people that deserve it. Yeah, everybody keep smashing that like button, please. Thank you very much, Adrian, for all the support, my man. You're absolute top man. And also everybody, I put in Ben's link to uh, his channel as well. Everybody it doesn't even take you away from the stream or anything like that. Just head on over, head on a big subscribe. He keeps you company during this week as well, Mr. Kaufman. Uh, he certainly does. He'll keep you straight during this week. FIFA statement and Tottenham Hotspur statement, uh, supporters trust statement, Dave, that we have to get to here. Thought maybe I'd share... Probably the FIFA uh, sort of statement yeah. first. Let me just pull that up in just a moment in time here. But everybody, this is coming in uh, from the likes of uh, The Guardian, I think, were the original ones kind of to break this story. Of Fabio Paratici has had his 30-month ban from football activity extended worldwide by FIFA after only initially being imposed by the Italian FA. Juventus were docked 15 league points in January at the resolution 
of a long-running investigation. Pratici, who joined Spurs in 2021, was among a number of former and current Juventus executives to receive lengthy bans after a hearing at the Federal Court of Appeal. His 30-month ban initially applied only to Italian football, but FIFA said in a statement on Wednesday in response to a question from The Guardian relating to Pratici, FIFA can confirm that following a request by the Italian FA, the FIGC, the chairperson of FIFA disciplinary uh, committee, has decided to extend the sanctions imposed by the FIGC on SEP to have worldwide effects. So in effect, Juventus have denied also everybody wrongdoing and they and Paratici have appealed this, but also a statement has come from this uh, Tottenham Hotspur supporters trust here, everybody. I'm just going to show that quickly here. They have this to say. This news adds further to the extremely concerning situation at the club. No manager, no director of football and uncertainty around our star player and our end of season finish. Fans deserve to have a uh, to hear a clear statement of strategy from THFC. And then they went on to say so they can be reassured by the board on their plan to bring success and stability to the club and big yourself up down there, Mr. Foggy Foam. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but lads, uh, maybe the first question here is, uh, and the one I have is, does Daniel Levy need to basically make a decision on Paratici's future as soon as possible? And also a follow-up on that is, how soon will he actually make that decision? Would it be a Nuno like, kind of sort of moment where we're waiting weeks and weeks and weeks, maybe waiting for the appeal? Um, start with yourself, Dave, actually. What are your thoughts? You know, where do you think it's, how do you think this is going to happen? Yeah, I'll go quickly. First of all, look, I know there's an appeal on with, with Juventus and Paratici. The likelihood is that they're probably going to lose it and it'll be left up to the to, to the actual uh, uh, court case. Um, look, I think that I think that the future should be decided today. I don't think Tottenham should sort of wait and see what happens with the appeal. There's no point of being embroidered in this mess, dragging the, dragging the club's name through it. You know, we've already got our own issues going on. It's already been dragged through the mud enough. So just cancel the ties. His role is pretty yeah. much, you know, his hands are tied behind his back. He can't operate. He can't do anything. He should not be in charge of bringing in a new manager because he won't be able to bring in the players for that manager. So straight away, you've just got to get him gone. Um, and look, I think the decision should be made today. Will you see coming out saying Paratici slack today? I'll be very surprised because the reality is there's contracts. There's a lot of sort of clauses and terms in these contracts and they will take, you know, a couple of days, if not a week to probably iron out and sort out um, sort of how to, how, how to uh, sort out about his exit. You know, how much will Paratici take? Because he'll have to probably give up some money and the club will probably have to give him some money to go as well. So, you know, it's how much... Uh, how quick can they come to an agreement on how much of that contract is paid up? Mm. What do you think, Ben? We, I think you said this earlier, this needs to be like each day that passes that Paratici's future is still left in question and still left a bit murky for Spurs fans is a failure. Yeah. But how long do you actually, if you were to give us an ETA, what do you think? You know, once it 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 done. As soon as that statement came out, he'd be out of a job. He'd leave that court with no job. He'd be gone today. And we'd already be looking for his replacement. We've got the perfect opportunity. We've got two months until uh, the season ends. We've got two months to find the replacement. Just get it done. Get him out the yes. door by the end of the day. Uh, I know you said there'll be contracts, but yeah. I bet the contracts will say that uh, if the legal case provided, if he cannot do his job, there is no point. But even if you have to put him on gardening leave, put him on gardening leave and then sack him. Is it all right to sack him and then say we are now looking for a new director of football yes. as well as a new manager? And then yeah. kind of what we were talking about earlier, Ben, where it's like we're looking for both at the same time who we know will be on the same page, yeah. et cetera, for guiding that's us into the future. Maybe that's we're the looking at a new direction. We are going in a new direction. We thank Paratashi for his Correct. for his yeah. um for his endeavors, but we're looking to go in a new direction. And that's when you bring in a director of football and a manager that are on the same route. The team, Levy clearly wants to play attacking football. So get a director of football and a manager that wants to play attacking football. No more scattergun approach. No more this. No more that. No more excuses. Do it now. Uh, Pratt is always going to bring in a, a pragmatic person. He's a pragmatic person. He's managed Juventus who play pragmatic football. Get in someone that suits the job. Instead of having a job and then getting someone completely different, getting the right person now. Do we think? Do we think not having that director of football 
now will delay the manager search. Like, what order do we go about? Do we bring do we bring the manager in? Whether he went as soon as you say the guy we want wants the job without knowing the director of football, or do you bring in the director of football and let them bring in the manager? And, uh, sorry, so better way of putting it: Do you let Daniel Levy pick the manager and then bring in the director of football, or do you let Daniel Levy pick the director of football because that obviously has to happen, and then he picks the manager? I mean, what I would do is I would go crawling in on my hands and knees to Paul Mitchell and apologise, make a public apology to Paul Mitchell. It's not going to happen, but that's what he should be on his hands and knees. Give Paul Mitchell the keys to the kingdom and say, please come back, bring in Pochettino with, with Paul Mitchell and say, you boys have the keys to the kingdom. I am going to go away from all footballing decisions because I have shown over the last four years I am incapable of running a football team for football and throw all the money they need, which wouldn't be a lot of money, because we do spend money. We do spend money, but we spend it poorly. Paul Mitchell wasn't spending money poorly and um, the majority of players. He was buying players like um, a Toby Alderweireld for 14 million, a Hugo Lloris at 12 million. This we is it, buying- actually. He brought in yeah. Deli Adley. He brought in Sonny. Deli, he brought in Toby. Sonny. He brought in These Wanyama are all as good well. Players. These are all good players that he brought in. Allow him to do his job as a chief scout and then bring in the coach that suits him and give him the keys to the kingdom. That's what I would do personally. What will Levy do? He'll probably bring in an umbrella. Because Will it be a Nuno situation, do you think, lads? Will it be a Nuno situation where it is going to be left until the appeal is over <laughs> and, and all that sort of thing? Like we're just going to be waiting in purgatory for forever? Is that how it's going to go? Like this could last. Well, like he gets banned today, but maybe his sacking won't actually happen until the end of the season. Is that how we expect it to happen? Um. No, look, I, I would expect them to be gone in the next week or so, to be honest with you. Okay. That's what I would expect. I would, I would, And I would expect a week max, depending on what the legalities are on the contract and how much each side are looking for and can they come to a, a negotiation. But Ben's right in what the, where it's like, uh, you know, unless there's a court case and we can sort of terminate effective immediately, happy days. But yeah. you know, you, you've got to get that director of football in before the before the end of the season because you have to start planning for next season. A good club right now is already planning for the summer transfer window, planning for what next season looks yeah. like. You know, if it was in we're we're well able to bring around F1 visions and plan that there's gonna be a go-kart stadium years in advance. Don't so what F1 new we have a track on the top of the stadium. Yeah, but this is my point. You know, why, why, why can't we show that vision when it comes yeah. to football? And getting the director of football, you know, one, where their vision's aligning and getting him straight to work. Right. Audit the squad. What do we need? Right now, I'm going to go about and do that. And also, I'm going to look for the right manager with the sort of players that I want to recruit and bring in here. And that's what needs to happen next. But the director of football has to come in first, uh, in, in, in my opinion. Because, like question, I said, you yeah. have to have them in line. Because if you don't, it only causes for problems. Charlie Akershire actually alluded to it on the, the interview we done with We Are Talking TV yesterday. Um, you know, where he spoke a bit about Paratici. And it was like, you know, you look at the difference in the wing backs that we brought in at left wing back. You've got Adoji, you know, 1920. Yeah. And then you've got Perisic at the tail end of his career. And it's like, you know, the vision didn't quite align. You know, Paratici was in charge of bringing in Adoji. And then you've got Conte who wanted. The likes of a pair well, like he, he like, bought a present for Joe or bought a present for Levy and bought a present for uh, for Conte. Basically, like two different, basically yeah, you know, and you can't choices. have that. What you need is you need both of them aligned. Yeah, I completely agree. I have another question here, though, lads. How much will Paratici's ban set us back this summer and beyond? How much does it maybe even set us back at all if, I guess, the manager and director of football does get sort of situated and maybe sort of repaired in the best sort of sense? That could happen. And then this might only be a, a bit of an embarrassment, you know, <laughs> in uh, Spurs' case at the at the end of the day. But what do you think, Ben? Could this set us back a lot? You know, how, how much is this going to set us back? Because as good as a job maybe like Dave and I, Paratici, ha- might have done, we do think he's done a good job. He still did get fired and uh, or, you know, still get banned from world football at a very inconvenient time and also has cast a bit more embarrassment, of course, onto Tottenham Hotspur. So does that set us back at all, do you think? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who the director of football is. Whilst we've got this chairman in charge, we're still going to be a shit show. Um, under multiple director of footballs, we've been a shit show. For me, it doesn't change. Uh, we've got to get we've got to get this next one right. 
Uh, I mean, we've been saying this is the last throw of the dice. And uh, he's been, 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 been saying it for ages. This is last, uh, and he suddenly gets another throw of the dice. Um, <laughs> we need to get this next one spot on. Um, I don't believe, I, I have no faith in this club that we're going to get it right. I've got no faith in them. Uh, uh, I've been saying multiple times, I don't think I will see Tottenham win a trophy for another 20 years. That is how little I think of this football club at the moment. I have got no So faith. even if he does hire a good director of football, in your opinion, Ben, it's probably going to be a similar it. faith like, for this, the other ones. Yeah, Because he said... Oh, there is this wonderful player called Sadio Mane we can get for £30 million, and he's absolutely brilliant. Clinton Enjoy comes in. Uh, Harry Redknapp, we can buy Gary Cahill for £16 million. He will revolutionise our Cahill backline. and Tevez, wasn't it? Cahill and Tevez. Cahill was. and Tevez for not a lot of money. You get Ryan Nelson and Luis Aha. <laughs> Yay! Uh, Bruno Fernandes from Sporting Lisbon, cracking player. Get him in for 40 million or whatever the price was. Here comes Gedson. We get the wrong Fernandez. Yay. Mm -hmm. It's whoever the director of football is, they will be micromanaged and we will get the wrong players. And yeah, they'll be under a similar confine, similar it. restrictions, similar breathing down the neck type of yeah. <laughs> type of uh, um, culture and environment. We wanted Hulk. We get Eric Lamella. Yay. But we never, they never. I would say in the case of Hulk, that dude clearly just wanted money. And uh, we all know with this club, we're not just going to give a guy, you know, yeah. money for money's sake. <laughs> and I think that was the case. I think Hulk has actually denied moves from like Real Madrid, you know, just to get like an extra 300,000, you know, over in Russia I mean, and stuff like that. He's a beast. That, so. He's got yeah. a cracking left foot on him. The man definitely likes his, uh, he likes his paycheck. That's for sure. Yeah. Dave, uh, does this set us back at all or does it really matter? What do you think? What I would say is I think it sets us back in terms of, and this is my biggest bugbear, we're not having that consistency in the, the director of football or the manager. Players like Dyer, Sanchez, Lloris. Well, I, 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 I struggle to throw Lloris into it, but I'm throwing him into it this season. But they just last longer again, don't they? It's like another director of football yeah. has to come in, retake a look at them. Same as a manager. We've seen already it can be go it can go well for the first six months. They're like, fuck me, you know, they're what's everyone talking about? They're fantastic behind the scenes, this, that, and the other. It'll last six months, and then when it's too late to do anything about it, when the transfer window's closed, we out. Straight off a cliff. It's like being in a room with Kardashian sisters going into a room with Susan Boyle. Like that to like that, right? It's not right, you know, and it's it, it can't continue. Well, hopefully the next guys that walk in here are wise to the situation in the dress room because ideally that's what needs to be sorted out. You sort that out. You get you eliminate the mistakes that we keep making. You improve that. You get better results on the football pitch, which then, then makes the fans happy. Makes everyone in and around the club happy, and you can move on and do great things when because it brings about togetherness. Sort of like what we've done on the pot. So though we didn't get over the line, that's sort of where we need to get back to, right? And in order to do that, it starts with with with, with, with that dress room because football is all about results now. You lose, you're sat, you win, you're the you're the greatest thing since sliced bread, you know. So it's all about you know winning and keeping results. So it's got to start with sorting out the football team. Okay. Next question. I have and not that these guys yeah, food got to accept again. that. Under a new vision, we're going to lose games. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to bring young players in who are going to make mistakes. But unfortunately, the only thing that matters to this chairman is the top four. He doesn't care how bad the football is, or how unstable it is. He doesn't care. As long as he gets top four, he's happy. And that needs to end. We need to build a new... We need, it's not even rebuild now. We need to build. There is no, there aren't any foundations. We need to build, 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 build under a a proper set of values. And you know it's bad when West Ham fans in the chat are bantering us. That's how bad it is. And they're I mean, going down for God's sakes. I mean, I mean look, I would, accept, I would accept it from maybe Arsenal fans. Fair enough, you know what I mean. But please. I mean, don't embarrass yourself, West Ham fans. Just don't do it. Just don't, don't, don't make don't make me expose you or call you out like that. And, and, and like you, come on, don't do it, please. Yeah, I think at, you should. At least, at least go down with some dignity. Get relegated with some dignity and pride, please. That he was, must have actually just bought his bubbles early today, so it's not to do. It 
That'll be the only thing that saves this season as they go down. It'd be hilarious. Big up Phil, representing the Phil Army. Big yourself up, my friend. I have another question here for you guys, lads. And uh, everybody, keep smashing that like button. Keep getting your comments in, everybody, as well. And if you do want to stop us at any stage, do feel free to put it in as a super chat. But a good question for you here, uh, guys, is what's Paratici's legacy? Is it mostly good? mostly bad sometimes good sometimes a maybe shit or is it you know as well the age-old question the parachity twin parachity propaganda question that originated over here don or fraud as Jack, well so we have off. to talk about that you kick it off kick it off for me lads uh Pratchett's legacy, I think he's probably better than Hitchin in the fact that he didn't waste an entire window. We did go through pretty much all of the Hitchin uh, transfers, and we did look at the ones that he pretty much did waste. I believe we can put it up here for reference. In that second season, he brought in the likes of uh, Indombele, who's now obviously just turned out to be a dud, Bergmine dud, Sassanon dud, Lacelso dud, Clark dud, Jetson Fernandez dud. And while I think Ben has brought up the argument, right, that a lot of directors of football in the past have brought forward a lot of great players for Levy to sign off on that maybe weren't these players. At the end of the day, these were the guys that we did sign for some pretty hefty fees yeah. for some pretty big money. And so you have to look at sort of Steve Hitchens track record, at least in my opinion. He signed us probably most of the worst players that we have seen in a long time, actually, at Todd yeah. Monsford. Davidson Sanchez is, of course, included in that one. Serge Aurier is, of course, included in that one. We have the likes of Joe Hart. We also have Joe Rodon as well. Matt Doherty. Yeah. It's not a good list, really, from uh, Mr. Hitch in there. And so when I do look it's at maybe someone like Faraci. The, the good so, players he did want in weren't allowed, like the Dybalas. When Dybala was in the office, asked him for 140K a week. And they said, no, nah, we'll give you 100. And he left. Like, yeah. uh, uh, Hitchin would look so much better if he got Grealish. He wanted, we wanted him for 25 million. Then we offered 2.5 million and... and um, Josh Onema. He could have had Milan Skriniar, which we have had a screaming deal at £40 million for him in his pomp. We could have had him in his pomp for £40 million. Quid. And yeah. that, that, that it's it's all context. It's all context. If he would have been allowed to have had Fernandez, Grealish, Skriniar and Dybala, he would look a lot better. I, I agree. And I think when it comes to Paratici is, though, at the end of the day, if you did just compare transfers versus transfers he did look like he had a much better hit rate than the likes of uh, Hitchin and even actually so I think despite Mitchell working under the club during very different conditions like we weren't exactly in the Champions League yet weren't really rolling in that sort of financial Super League to, you know English Super League money that it is yeah. right now either and so it was maybe a different environment but he yeah. also I think had a much better record than the likes of Steve Hitchin so cool. I think Paratici if you look at him between him and Paul Mitchell, it's maybe up for debate between the two. A lot of people will go with Paul Mitchell just because at the end of the day, Paul Mitchell did have that great relationship with the likes of Pochettino and maybe one sort of, I don't know, Dave and uh, Ben, maybe for us, while I do think Paratici has set us up for the future with great players like Kulisevsky, Romero, Richarlison, I still think is setting us up for the future. Basuma is setting us up for the future. I think he's still got a lot of good players in. Benton Core, of course, as well. And the likes of Udogi, we all know. Plenty of good players are here for the future. And so I do feel like we have the foundations of good players. What I would say is maybe the managerial kind of hunt with Paratici has always been a bit sort of kind of a... How, I wouldn't know if it's a blunder, but it's just been maybe a bit more of a scar kind of on his time here. Because while we were connected to a bunch of other managers before Nuno, we ultimately did sign Nuno. And it's kind of the same thing I gave to Hitchin. I think I have to play by the same rules here where I'm sort of like, at the end of the day, if that's who Hitchin signed, that's who Hitchin signed. And I'm going to say the same thing with Paratici. Like Paratici was linked with all these other managers, but ultimately he signed Nuno. And that was a huge, huge, huge mistake. Uh, I think on his part, I think bringing in Antonio Conte actually at the time was a huge success, especially mm -hmm. since it's basically saved our season and bringing yeah. in a top four. So I don't really know if Antonio Conte is exactly like any fault of his in any yeah. means, but I would say Nuno, if I were to look at maybe the worst mistake he's made during his tenure, I would say definitely bringing in Nuno. If I were to say probably some of the best and maybe more unnoticed things maybe have actually been the fact that he did completely revamp the scouting department and brought in a bunch of new guys in sort of the hierarchy of that scouting system that weren't previously there under Hitchin. Hitchin, I guess, was sort of just left in charge of all of that. And yeah. then I guess Parachichi brought in a bunch of new guys like Radar Steinson, et cetera, into the club. And I think that's another thing that probably went 
on notice for him. But if I really just stack him up compared to maybe the past three directors of football, I personally think Parachichi really does not look bad at all. And in fact, I think he was doing a pretty all right job. And he's, for the most part, set us up for the future, I think, despite the way that he has left at the end of the day, which certainly is embarrassing and inconvenient. Um, I think, take it away, somebody. I, I, look, I think we make too many excuses for Steve Hitchin, to be honest with you. Like, I, I get about bringing names to the table, but at the end of the day, where the guy fought fell down is he couldn't negotiate properly. And I think that's where Paratici probably trumps him a little, whereas you've seen it at times, no budget left for Romero, but he's still able to sort of negotiate that deal. Same as Kulazeski. And look, Steve Hitchin tried getting in loan signings in here, but the reality is they weren't very sore successful where Whereas the Paratici ones, the majority of them have sort of been successful, especially the loans with an obligation to buy sort of ones. They've mm. been very successful. Um, look, I'm not going to sit here and profess Paratici got everything right. I, I'm not going to sit here and, and 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 say that it was all perfect because it wasn't. The reality is he will end up leaving here with our back line still in tatters. You know, um, the new no hiring, not, not such a... Um, a good look on him. And apparently Nuno was a guy that, you know, he liked what he'd done at Valencia and that's sort of why he wanted him in here. So there are some things he got wrong, but what I will say is there is a lot of things where people criticize him for getting them wrong. The likes of Galini, but the reality is he fixed it very, very quickly with, um, Crazy with bringing in Fraser Forrester in here. Right. You know, a lot of people aim, um, Emerson at him, regardless of my opinion, whether I think he's good or not, a lot of people aim Emerson at him. But you know, he went he went and fixed he he went and fixed that. He's gone and got But then you compare like, it to Sassanion oh. quickly, Dave, where it's like Sassanion you would quickly probably ship off than than that like Emerson has been here at a shorter time than Sassanion and he's yeah, played but, more games than Sassanion ever has, and he's also put in better performances than Sassanion ever has. And so there's my, that as well. Sorry, your point. What 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 my point is though, is that like even if you want to say he got it wrong notify that he corrected it very, very quickly if you believe he's got it wrong. There are stuff that people say he's got wrong, but he, he doesn't get the credit for going and fixing it. Whereas in years gone by, it hasn't really been the case. It's sort of like just persist with it. And one thing I like, what, what I like about Paratici is I think we're very quick to forget how awful it was watching a partnership of Winston's as own call or you're at right wing back, you know. Um, you, you know, some of the options we had up front, Bergvine or Lucas Moura, people are very, very quickly to forget how awful that was. And at times, you know, he's been very quick. He ripped up Barrio's contract. He'd done what he had to do to get Dali Ali out the door, more or less. Same yeah. as Matt Doherty, you know. So, and I know a lot of people the say... The Dali Ali thing is probably the best deal ever. Mm. But I know a lot of people say, Dave, look at all the other players he's failed to get out the door. But what people won't say is, we're coming out the back of a pandemic. You know, the money around Europe is just not there in the European leagues. And the teams that do have the money, some of the top teams... They ain't coming to get Harry Winks or any of them sort of guys. So you're relying on the smaller teams in and around Europe to take a punt on these guys. And I, I hopefully now where you see maybe the clubs coming out of that sort of side, hopefully now you'll see these clubs having the money to bring them in. Like, for instance, Giovanni Lo Celso. Can't blame him for not being able to sell him. Villarreal only done a swap deal with Watford in the championship a week before that deal because the money just isn't there. And that sort of highlights it and shows it. And the reality is, he didn't get everything right, but one thing I will say is thank you because I see a vision. I see something to build off now. I see a way going forward, whereas under the likes of the previous squad we had, I didn't see it, and I only seen it getting worse and worse and worse, and I didn't know where to start with that previous squad, whereas now I know exactly what we need to do, goalkeeper, centre-backs, and I can, and hopefully you'd have a decent enough product on the pitch to sort of maintain Champions League and use that as a base to push on with. Um, so for me, I think overall, I think his time has been, I wouldn't say a roaring success, but I think it's, I think, I think it's been successful. In, I don't think you could attach failure also, to it at all. You know, yeah. it's gone from Europa Conference League to, to, to Champions League. And I know people are going to say, oh, well, I'm just bored of Champions League. But the reality is, it's much better than Europa Conference League. And he's took us, he's took us from there to there with his recruitment and with hiring in the manager that he has. So I would say, you know, he's, he's definitely left the club in a better place than what he found it. 
Yeah, that's the last thing I would say is he's left at the end of the day, he's left the club in a better place than where he originally found it. And that doesn't mean he's the best director of football of all time or anything, but that just means with any job, I think in the world, Ben, you'd like to think that that's how you sort of ended it. Even if you were fired within three months, if you were fired after 30 years, you left the place in a better place than you found it, you know, and uh, that's what you probably yeah. always want. It doesn't mean you were the best employee yeah. of all time by any sense, but it means that you weren't by any means hurting us. Unfortunately, the legacy of the bloke is bringing in Brian Hill for £30 million and getting rid of Eric Lamella and then loaning back Brian Hill to exactly the same club. So not only have they got the money, they've also got Brian Hill and they've also got Lamella. Is that the worst strategy transfer for you then? But again, this is not all his... I just want to comment on... I just just want to get your opinion on the Lamella team just quickly, Ben. Sorry for cutting across it. People go on like Lamella was this all in becoming great player in our first oh, yeah. 11. The reality is he spent a lot of years as backup. So I don't mind him going and sort of trying to refresh with, with a youngster, if you get what I mean. It's um, There are eight players out on loan. And that, is, I, that might not be a parasity problem. We ask for too much money for crap players. That's Which fair. football team is asking for £25 million pounds <laughs> for Harry Winks? Get him gone, except five million. Just get them out the door, because not only are you getting the transfer fee, you're getting them off the books. We ask for too much money. La Celso, no. fifteen million quid. Someone will buy him for fifteen million quid, even if it's over a few. But we years. wouldn't budge on like twenty-three years. No, we wouldn't budge. We ask yeah. for too much money, yeah. and it all goes back to the way the club is run. No, it's, we ask him for too much money and Dombele, get him gone for 25 million someone will pay 25 million pounds because he is a brilliant talent but he just and needs we want 40 out. or we want 40 back or we want the bend the wages are a problem these guys are on as well because of the contracts whether it's again, that's contract, another thing. Yeah. if they get a deal on the track on the wages then they can then pay him more via wages so they, they can always find that mm. they can find that way we're asking for too much money, which is why we're not able to clear the decks. We need to get rid of all of them, get rid of them for a minimal fee, and reset. Mm-hmm. Reset. There are um, loads of the, the transfers he made. Are yeah. Parasic was well, started the season brilliantly, but because we don't have a backup, he's faltered because he's thirty-four. He can't play wing back in this system anymore. We need to have a, bought a. We bought one, but he's at another club. He should have mm. been straight in the team because mm. he's clearly showing at Udinese. He's brilliant. Yeah, he's doing well. He's, he's, he's doing really well at Udinese. I would we, say he also, for the most part, didn't exactly fix it entirely, but he repaired like it was almost an open heart surgery, our midfield, because we had only basically Hoiberg in that midfield at one stage. And Dombele was gone. Deli Ali was gone. Los Elsa was gone, who were all useless, as we had just said. And he just had Harry Winks and like Lacelso basically there. So he had to like perform surgery on that midfield. And he was bringing in the oh, likes of Basuma. He brought in Basuma. Even if you said it was a club signing, that was much better than what we had. He brings in Bentoncor, Papa Matasar for the future. Skippy has now been brought into the team. Of course, maybe that's not him as much, but you know what I'm trying to say here. Like he did at least, I think that's one thing that at least he brought from a, an originally horrible place to what is now a much more kind of sane and at least reasonable yeah. place. And I think the same thing goes with sort of actually the right back situation. We had Serge Aurier as our best one to give to Jose as a right back to offer. It was terrible. And Matt Doherty was the only other one that he had to choose from. Two terrible choices. Now he has at least better choices and at least the case Not of anymore, Pedro though, Coro and right Emerson. No right, one right back, no left backs because they're all injured. Sack the <laughs> fitness team. Sack them all. So there are exactly. parts of the squad he did repair, at least, in, in yeah. my opinion. And he had a lot. It's like if you looked at like a whole thing that you, it's like yeah. a wall that's just with a thousand different holes. It's like, where do you start? And he got a lot done, I think, in that time period. He could have done better. Absolutely. But did he set us back, you know, years or anything like that? Absolutely not. Whereas I would Going say forward, previous director of football, in my opinion, happened. did set us back a lot of years. In my opinion, I think Steve Hitchin set us back some years. It, mm. It's it's all to do with the person at the top of the tree. It's all to do. They need to allow the next director of football to do their job. Mm. Uh, even Paratici has been trying to get some. He, he wanted Conte and Levy wouldn't give him the money to get him in in the first place. No. Of course, Conte has ended really poorly. It's ended poorly. It's ended with the entire house in flames. And 
it's it's going to get there. It's going to get there, but we yeah. need to start backing a manager with a philosophy, and we need to clear the decks. We need to have one organisation again instead of five mm. sub camps. We need to get rid of people say uh, uh, Ben Davis is good backup. No, he's not. <laughs> no, you're, you're I'm not. guilty of that. Eric I actually is not good enough backup. These I'm are... guilty. I think it, but I think he is Ben. Just quickly, I think with Ben Davis, he's he's he's, all, he's been guilty right. of being able to survive the best of a bad right. lot. He survives the best of a bad lot. I think. No, but he's the one going to the chairman to get the manager out. He's true. the one. He's the That's mentality. Dave gets would, them Dave out. Would agree with that. Dave would In, agree with that. We need yeah. a united workforce. Gets them all out. They failed for ten years. They don't. If they if they were so good, someone would want them. No one <laughs> wants them because they're awful. Get them out. KPB now. here. KPB mm. here, member for 12 months, says, big up, guys. We need a new director of football. Now that the Don has been banned from football, we need a new director of football. This summer, every single day is Levy out day, says KPV. And member for 12 months, fan show member as well. The one and only KPV. No longer have the – Conte no longer can let the dogs out, KPV. So someone's going to have to let the dogs out. But, uh, yeah, we'll have to. but big up, KPV, my man. Look, you know. I'll be honest, you know, I, look, I, I don't think anybody expected the season to end like this. I don't think anyone wanted the season to end like this. Uh, it's just another season, you know, since 2019 where Tottenham Hotspur sort of just just, just tail off again. Sort of our season, our season was ruined before it's even got going, but it sort of brings it back round to Ben's point, you know. I get what people say about Ben Davies, right, but Ben Ben's spot on, you know. You know, as as much as you think he's okay to be back up in terms of what you're watching on the pitch, don't forget he has the charmans here. He can go to charman anytime he wants. You know, there's a reason why Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte's training regimes and the intensity that they bring and that they demand from 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 these players, you know, rubs off after a certain while, and then these players cannot last it. They've proven that. You know. We wonder why we like we can sit here and we can blame the likes of the management and the director of football for losing to the likes of Sheffield United and all this. But the reality is, you know, it's been going on a lot longer before they were even anywhere near this club. You know, it's been going on under different managers and there's been certain people that have been a massive part and have been selected in nearly every single one of them away disasters across the Europa League, Europa Conference League, FA Cup, League Cup, some of the games in the Champions League this year, you know, the likes of a Davies, a Dyer and stuff like that. And it's getting to the point where, you know, it, it's like on rotation. One person will make three mistakes in a row. Where everyone's highlighted him and then Sanchez goes, don't worry about it, Dyer. I'll take it for the next yeah. three. And then Sanchez gets the heat and then everyone's like, ah, oh, Dyer, Dave, Dyer isn't too bad. And then David goes, hold on there. I'll take it now. And then Larissa go, I'll take it now. And it's like, and then, you know, it's it's like the next person mistakes overshadows the person before and everyone's like, they're good enough. In order for this club to progress, we shouldn't, the reality is people say, keep these guys around as backup. What good are they when they come in the cup games and they lose them? What good are they when we get injuries and suspensions and they have to step in? We've already seen it. You know, they'll make a mistake. They'll cost us goals, which cost us momentum, which ends up costing us our season. It's that simple. You know, we go on a nice, like we haven't been able to string three, three results on the bounce, three wins on the bounce together yeah. this season. That's because you get two good games. Then we go out there in the third game. We're 2 0 down before half time. We're looking to chase the game. That sucks all the momentum out of the squad. Then you have to pick yourself up and start again. Then you go, you, you sort of get it done. Then you go and play Sheffield United. You lose to them. Morale's down again. You know, it's costing all momentum every single season. So as long as, as well as a director of football, a manager, you know, a change in captain, we also need a freshman up of, of these Potts players. And, you know, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about Kennison, because the reality is they've, they've dug in for the last three years. They've been the only enjoyable part of this football club for the last two, three years, in my opinion. What I'm talking about is guys that never, never really, you know, they, they sort of claim that they're tagalongs, I call them, on what Potts done. Everyone else, like Toby, Jan, Walker, Rose, then Bele, people like that, Kane, Son, they all done the work. These guys were always on the periphery and they're taking the accreditation with it. And they think they're good enough and that they're that player. When in reality, they're not. And they've been here too long. And what they're able to do is go, I don't like this manager. I can't keep up with what he needs, even though it's for the betterment of the club. 
So what I'll do is I'll go to Daniel Levy. Oh, by the way, I've been here eight, nine years. Me and my family also know a lot of press officers, a lot of people in the press. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll start leaking stories to them and we'll put the narrative out. That they, and then all of a sudden, everyone turns against the manager. And that's what we keep seeing. That has got to stop if we want any progression. Steve yeah. D saying time for good and evil to unite. Dave, Steve D, the mortal enemy. Can Are you guys coming together? Can a truce be made? I know, look, me and Steve, I've, I look, I've always liked Steve. I'm one of these. I, I, I actually don't mind people not agreeing with me. Sometimes I, I, I like it, you know. It gives me an argument if I need an argument. It sometimes brings the best out of me. But also, you know, it opens, it broadens my mind, opens my mind to things that maybe I've missed. Um, but with Steve, look, my man, um, we'll definitely, uh, definitely unite. Why not? But look, all I would say is, let's see, let's see, at the end of the day, whether we agree or not, Everyone wants what's best for this football club, and that's what's in here, and that's all that matters. Whether you have two different ways of going about it, no need to rip their heads off each other or anything like that. Just know that, you know, even if you disagree with the person, it's in here what matters, and it's in here where they have Tottenham Hotspur, and that's where it's coming from. DG says, what in God's name is this news? DG, this is the type of news where you just had to sort of drop everything and sort of yeah. like just make sense of it. That's what's so horrible is Dave and I, we were trying to, you know, look at maybe under the hood of the channel and everything today, do some stuff behind the scenes and that this just happens just yeah. and is thrown in our plate. It's just hot and hot spur. It's just how it is. You just can't expect anything. Can't expect a quiet day. I think we see this happen to Ali Gold all the time as well, right? Every single weekend where he thinks it's just going to be a quiet weekend at Tottenham Hotspur just never is you know how it is dg and uh i think yet again they've surpassed expectations for what we thought was possible uh dg pick yourself up my friend truth sets free giving away a membership to stefan blois pick yourself up truth set, uh, sets free and also he's giving away a membership to adam phillip as well big up adam phillip either you too come on the fan show come join me friday and uh keep me company and have a nice chat with me on all this news and who knows between now and then i bet a lot more drama could occur so come on and have your say friday pick yourselves up pick yourself up truth sets free as well and then also he came in with a super chat here i believe uh Sorry, just give me a moment. Saying here, the dude on the left is the biggest legend ever in my profile picture. It's unexplainable what he did for us. He is my hero, Harold the Great. See you in heaven in my future, son. God bless. Big yourself up. Uh, truth, I think at times like these, my friend, you just need to just sort of make sure that everything in, in life is good with yourself. Everything with the family is good. Like you said, thank you for wishing us some good health. Thank you for wishing us, you know, a good week and everything, my friend. I appreciate that. And I wish you the same. And uh, you have to have good reminders of, you know, everything that's bigger than Tottenham Hotspur as well. Uh, true. Yeah. But, yeah. Dave, anything to say? Yeah, look, look, true. You know, I'm sorry that you're going through hard times, yeah. my man. And um, like I said to Dharma earlier on, you know, sometimes time can be a great healer. And just remember, you know, and this is what sort of gets me through these times is, yeah, sit there, remember, but always try and remember the great times, the laughs and stuff like that, rather than, you know, um, anything else. And, and just remember that, you know, that person would want you to get on with your life, you know, and be happy and continue being yourself. So just always remember that, my man. Be yourself up, true. Yeah. Yeah. Big yourself up, true. Appreciate you, my friend. Um, but I think kind of going to go to maybe some sort of wound, you know, kind of wind down sort of questions here. Maybe do this one. Worst Paratici transfer. Ben, Brian Hill was the one that you mentioned earlier. Would you stick by that or something worse? Can we see the rest of them? You've got a picture of the Paratici transfer. Yes, let me pull them up for you. Sorry, that the, I don't know why the setting looks like that. It's not easy on the eyes. It's between Hill and Galini. It's the battle of the Gs. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's really difficult. That's really awful. I'm going to go Galini. I'm, I'm going to show a bit of faith in the hill. I still think he needs a trip to the Wimpy. I'll take him. I'll take him. I know where a good spot is. He needs, it is. He, needs <laughs> a, he needs a couple of burgers from the Wimpy with some special sauce. And I think he'll be he'll be right there. But it's got to be Galini. But funnily enough, Galini is doing well at Fiorentina. So maybe Galini isn't so bad. But it's, enough, it's the curse of Tottenham. Goes to Fiorentina, starts doing all right. <laughs> I'll it's take real. anybody other than Lloris at this stage. Maybe that's why, you know, yeah. the leader is looking okay. It's just we've gotten so used to watching Lloris week in, week yeah. out. Dave, what's yours? 
Yeah, I, I would go along with Gallini. Uh, I can't forget about that game against Morecambe. Flaffing at things, I think he'd done the same against Chelsea in the, yeah. in the semi-finals of the League Cup as well. Flaffing at crosses coming in. Yeah, for me, it's got to go down to him. Good at yeah. rapping, though. Anyone that says gets anyone that says Gil Messi, they're just offended by a nickname. So <laughs> I think Gil Messi has shown what he's been given the chances under Antonio Conte. He took his chances, if you ask me. Best Paratici transfer here, everybody. This one is could be an interesting one. We have might have maybe more different answers in this regard. If I'm gonna uh, go first, I would it's a toss-up for me between Romero and Kulusevsky. Here, guys, it's a toss-up for me between Romero and Kulusevsky. I'm going to go for, I do think it's going to be, I think it's Romero actually, just because I am a more of a fan of the defenders. I think Romero is basically the reincarnation of Sergio Ramos, where he is basically the master of dark arts, the master of evil. And sometimes he just does things that are unexplainably just (laughs) insane on the pitch at times where you just don't know where his head is at. So I I just love that type of defender. I love that type of just old school, even though I'm not even from the old school. I just like to see the guys that have more of a, a sort of intensity to their game and how they go about it and sort of a willingness to get stuck in. So for me, Romero, one of the best defenders I've seen in a long, long time at Spurs, probably in the likes of the Jan, as well as Toby realm of, you know, quality defenders I've seen at Spurs, which is not many. Dave or Ben? Sorry, Ben, you go first. Uh, Good thing Jacob's in the house because it's Ben Dangur. That is the man, uh, as everyone likes to know. I'm going to I'm going to stand by my other Ben. Benton Kerr has come into the club and been the metronome. As soon as he leaves the team with his injury, we've gone to shit. It's that man. We need to have Jacob's voice though. Anytime someone says his name and his R's that go on for forever, it's uh, Rodrigo Benton Kerr is the best player on this list and absolutely phenomenal player. And there he is in the chat. Benton Kerr, <laughs> top man. Um... David. For me, look, I think I think Benton Core, I think uh, he has, he's been brilliant in the midfield. I think um, Kula Sexy has been very, very uh, good since he's come in. For me, I think Romero is the real steal here, to be honest with you. I think I really like what he's about. You know, defensively, he's 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 a bit of me on the front foot, aggressive, passionate, you know, proactive rather than reactive. And without him, I would hate to see how much more we really could have conceded this year, how much more worse it would have been last year. So for me, I would say Romero for me is the um, the uh, best signing um, um, for me. So I like it. All righty. Well, everybody, I think Romero, like I said, double double trouble for Romero. And then we got Bentancur. Uh, shout as well from the likes of uh, Mr. Kaufman. Um, but we're going to put in Mr. Uh, Kaufman's uh, channel in here. Give it a plug. Ben, anything that's coming up on the channel? And also from me to you, thank you very much for keeping us company. Thank you for, very much for giving up time in your day and uh, helping us out today, Ben. Uh, what's coming up on the co- on the coffee company? Yeah, um, you know it, what it is like at the coffee company. We've got chill moments, an hour a day where you avoid all the horrific nonsense that's surrounding Tottenham Hotspur. And we just chill for an hour. And it's an absolutely wonderful time to be around. And we're going to be having a new show, hopefully starting next Monday, which I am keeping under wraps. We need to finish it. But we've got a brand new show that's about to start. And it's going to be absolutely hilarious. And the people involved with it are going to be absolutely phenomenal as always. You, You know them very, very well. And on Tottenham on tour as well. Tottenham on tour with myself, Danny Kiriaku, uh, Brian Daigle, and of course, Brian Ireland. Uh, we're going about with Cockle Doodle Doos, our new morning shows, which you enjoy. Uh, have your cup of coffee in the morning, your paper, and then listen to us rant about what's happening. So follow us on Tottenham on tour on the coffee company. We really need your support. And we're just going to, we're going to chill out together and be nice. And, Let's all be good people. And, of course, now with this new movement that's starting, so Voice for Spurs, get that hashtag everywhere. It's time we all got together as an online community, as friends, as partners. Let's force change for this club in a positive light, and we're going to get there. So wherever you are, Voice for Spurs, let's get together as a family. Let's push forward 
in a right we're no longer the people's front of judea we are now one united front against crapness at tottenham hotspur and um, mm. big up big up for you boys for letting me on no great yeah. service that you've done uh, for us ben and honestly great things that you had to say and i also clearly a lot of people love what you have to say over here so mm. well done to you my friend well done to you yeah i appreciate your time this afternoon ben really appreciate it brother and i really enjoyed the discussion again today actually so thank you for that boys and uh you know uh, I echo what Ben Ben has said, you know, um, you know, ho hopefully it can work out. Hopefully it does bring about some sort of change. So 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 let's see what happens. But um I think that's it from us today, Jacko. Yeah, I think that's it from us. Um everybody, I'm, i think there's gonna be a video posted out later tonight. Um, what I would say as well, look out for could be maybe a debate show like this tomorrow, because who knows, maybe another person might get fired from this whole hierarchy of Tottenham and we'll be here right again. But everybody, what I would say, hit that like button, please, on the way out. I think only 100 likes I'm seeing. There were nearly well over 200 for plenty of the show. So let's try to get that maybe to 150 if we can, everybody. that will be a massive service to us. But everybody hit that like button if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, I think we'll be seeing you very, very soon. Come on, you Spurs. And uh, Stellini and Mason, we trust. Dason. Oh, Darmo doesn't want anyone to end. He's saying, you're not going anywhere. You're sitting here for a while and entertaining me, you fuckers. He says, just want to thank you from me and Dermot. No, look, no need to thanks whatsoever, Darmo. You, you know you know what, lad. We always hope any, anyone connected with the channel, anyone that watches, helps, you know, and stuff like that. Um, that that you know everyone's good and and hopefully we can always be there for you in the time of need. You just look after the missus and uh, get back whenever you can, Darmo. But first, first and most important priority is Darvina. Make sure she's okay. Big up. Yeah, pick yourself up, Dermatron, and uh, take care of yourself. Like I've always said, my friend, take care of yourself. Pick yourself mm -hmm. up, brother. And uh, big up, my man. See you back Absolute soon, legend. Big up. And uh, yeah, so that's it from us today. Um, unless there's any breaking news, unless Doris gets sacked from the canteen, which we can't have. So, guys, we will see you all back here tomorrow. Make sure you check out the coffee company um, as well. Get over there and smash that subscribe button. Regardless whether the, the, the shit we go through, um, always come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. And Stason, we trust. <laughs> in Dave, we trust. In the coffee trust, get the coffee in. If you smell what the cough is brewing, come on. See everybody. Adios, amigos. See Adios. everybody. <laughs>